<laughs> he roll. Actually, Talk amongst yourselves. Be we'll be right back. So hold on. Hold on. <laughs> and I had to shoot my hand. Continuity. Yes. Go. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here. Welcome to VO Buzz Weekly. We have two rock stars of Penguin Random House. He is a Grammy Award winning producer and VP of content production. She is also an award winning producer and spearheading the exciting new venture we're gonna tell you all about. So get ready, we're getting buzzed with the amazing Dan Zitt and Juliana Wilson. Yay! Welcome! <laughs> Thanks. Do you hear the war? Do you hear the war of the crowd? That's a war. I have goosebumps. Oh my goodness You guys are gracious. here from New York. Thank you so much for making some time to sit down with us. And we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Good. It's We're a excited. great way to, You're excited yeah. to talk it's about it. It's a great way to kick off the new year. Yeah. So everyone get ready. Get your notes ready. Absolutely. You want to start off or you want to... Um, okay. Well, for some people who don't know, once you get the book from an author... Can you kind of take us through the process of what happens to get it to a finished audiobook? Um, so after uh, Penguin Random House has acquired a book, it goes to our editorial team, um, and they pass it along to our production team. And after that, we have 12 in-house audiobook producers with like mm -hmm. over 200 years of audiobook experience. Um, so the 12 of us kind of sit in a room or a steel cage and <laughs> huddle about and decide who's gonna actually work on the book. Yeah. And one of the things that we like to kind of keep really organic at Penguin Random House is like producers, you know, we want producers to work on the books that they want to work on. Yeah. Um, and after, you know, say Julie Wilson takes on a book, do you wanna take over from there? Like, what is your process? Um, so essentially, like you said, we go into a cage match, which is a very friendly cage match where we all sit around a round table and we pick off our favorite titles and mm -hmm. until all the titles are taken for that season. And then we all go into our private little cubbies and we start reading and we start thinking about what voice do I need for mm -hmm. this project or what voices do I need for this project or do I need sound effects or do you need music and just, we're trying to bring whatever that story is to life on audio. We're not trying to embellish it in any way. We're really trying to bring the essence of it to right. our medium. And then we start drafting up author letters and communicating what our vision for their project is to the author. And then we have a dialogue with the author and that can be a very short dialogue where mm -hmm. they're very excited about what our vision is, or it can be even more collaborative where they want to go a little bit more in depth with us. Um, I mean, I think the foundation yeah. of what we've done at Penguin Random House over the last 20 years that I've been there is it's all about collaborating with the author. I mean, yeah. authors work on these books for five, ten years, and they're handing it off to us and mm -hmm. trusting us with it. Yeah. Um, so it is our responsibility. We read the books. We talk to them about what voice or voices they're hearing in their head. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's many. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So once the narrator or cast come into play, there has been weeks, months of preparation. Well, I think it depends. I mean, you know, one thing you have to think about with audiobooks is, you know, we're waiting for that book to be finished. Mm -hmm. And we go simultaneously on sale with every hardcover mm -hmm. that's put out. So essentially our time to actually produce something is usually shorter. It's very narrow, um, yeah. But I would also say that, you know, you know, we just finished up the BC Boys book. It's five. We worked on that over five months. Mm. You know, yeah. so, so, but that's not normal, I would say for us. Most of the time it's, you know, we probably work within a three month window from when yeah. the book is done. Yeah. Um, after we've cast the actor, we we also hire directors, which is kind of our forgotten art in the audiobook yeah. industry. Yeah. True. Um, I'd say we're like one of the last publishers who actually brings directors into a studio to work with talent, to do all the preparation on the book, to talk to the author before we go into the studio. And then you know, spend time with the actual actor talking about approach. Yeah, and yeah. your directors um, are so wonderful. Oh, yeah. They are so yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that that's the difference between listening to an audiobook where you just completely get immersed in mm -hmm. because the direction is so great and you even cry because, yeah. you know, the acting is just out of this world. And then another one, you're like, what did you say? 
Yeah. yeah. Mama, <laughs> mispronounced mama, words. Mama, yeah. 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 Think, which, which you do hear yeah. in some audiobooks out there, yeah. but I have to mention Charlie something Brown's really teacher. quick, man, <laughs> is that the, the audio the audiobook industry right now or has been exploding. It's bigger yeah. now than sure. it ever has mm-hmm. been. So in the past decade, decade or so, how have you seen this industry grow and where do you see it growing? It's absolutely insane. Well, I started at Penguin Random House 11 years ago as an intern. And so I feel like I was there really before it was really paid any attention to. Like everyone loved books and they loved reading, but they didn't really think about audiobooks. And he's been there, what, 13, 14, 15 years years longer than I have. So we've really seen it grown tremendously. And I think when I started, we were doing around 200, 300 books. And now we're up to 1,200 books a year. So probably closer to 1,400. Yeah. So you kind of break that down. It's like, you know, our average length is about 10 hours. Yeah. Of audio, that's like 50,000 hours of raw recorded audio before we get to edit it. So it's a lot of recording yeah. um, between New York, L.A. and wherever yeah. talent oh, is yeah. in yeah. America. Yeah. yeah. Um, and each of our producers does 100 books or so individually a year. So we always mm-hmm. are multitasking and juggling a lot. And the other thing is like the, the industry has changed because the books have gotten longer. You yeah. know, 20 years ago, we were abridging everything. Mm-hmm. So we would take, you know a 12 hour book that would be unabridged and cut it down to like three hours because that's what the market wanted. And now people want every word. So we're recording every word of every book, sometimes with many actors. Um, So yeah, it's, it's definitely blown up. I mean, just the idea that, you know, part of the reason we built Ahab was because the industry is blown up and like hiring actors in this industry is getting more and more difficult Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, Mm -hmm. because there's a, they're in such high demand. Absolutely. Yeah. Segwayed like, an award-winning producer. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Ahab, shall we? Sure. It's very exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting. So what was the inspiration behind cre- creating this? So two years ago, um, I remember coming to the office and just going, why do we have stacks of CDs um, of people's you know, voice samples and resumes and photos? I don't know why people are sending photos to audiobook you know, companies doesn't really matter. Um, and I was like, there's got to be a better way to kind of aggregate all this information about all these actors. Um, so we created this kind of internal database that we had. And a year later, we were like, we should just, we got to flip the script here. You know, we're out like running out trying to find actors. Why don't we let the actors come to us? They want to seek us out. Mm-hmm. We want to hear what they have to say. So we built this database with the idea of kind of diversifying our casting and growing the potential narrators in our list, mostly to serve our authors. The books that we're recording are becoming more and more diverse. Mm -hmm. We need more and more diverse voices. So we want to find people not just in all the hubs in New York and LA and, you know, Atlanta and Chicago, but we want to find people all over the country. Mm -hmm. So when I'm recording a book that has two characters in the first person that are from Atlanta, you know, I can go down to Atlanta and find some actors. And Ahab has had been a really good tool to help us facilitate that. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. So this is really opening up the market for a lot of yeah. new narrators all yeah. around the country. Yeah. yeah. What well, about even the world? Absolutely. Like, right. I mean, oh, absolutely. It's not just in the U.S. I mean, okay. we've, we've expanded into Canada, into the U.K., um, into Australia, places starting like that. Spain. Yeah, yeah, starting mm-hmm. in Spain right now. Spanish that is incredible. language voiceover. Um, and I think, you know, overall... The reception has been great. I mean, people yeah. well, are actually I, excited. I know yeah. right now there's a bunch of audiobook narrators yeah. out there going like, what? Ahab.us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A chance to work for who? Yeah. 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 Um, can I ask you something? Are there any uh, qualifications that you would expect from a narrator to be on, on, the, on the site? Well, I always say to new narrators especially is hone your craft before you upload clips because that's what we're judging you by, If especially if we haven't met you in person yet. Yeah. So we're looking for clips that are a fiction sample, a nonfiction sample. If you can do any voices, if you can do any accents or you aren't, you're fluent in any, any languages or you like working in kids' books or so, any niches, we want to see the clips yeah. up there. But get hone your craft first so you don't put on something too raw there. And we also aren't looking for VO clips exactly on there because we don't want to hear that music before going into what your narration is because right. it's very distracting for us as producers. So, right. Well, it's a different art altogether. Yes. You know, producing, you know, a commercial is way different than an audiobook. Yeah. I mean, a 10-second clip is yeah. going to be way different. So, you know, a 10-second sample of you, you know, 
plugging Clorox isn't really going to move the you, needle. Right. You want right. to hear real narrative content. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good absolutely. quality, yeah. but without sound effects, without yeah, a production. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. really about your voice and highlighting your skill set. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. This is really cool, man. I, I have so many questions. Some of them are dumb. But that's okay. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, there are no dumb I questions. know that there's people out there right now going like, "What?" Um, so and so, this is questions for them because I know that they'll have this, and and hopefully you'll have a good answer. But so, if there's a narrator out there and he wants to upload some of his audiobook content that he maybe he's been doing here and there, um, and he has honed into that craft and he's really good at what he does, um, quality. Uh, what kind of quality are you guys looking for? Is there a specific mic that they should be using or something that you guys like, uh, the technical side of it? Because if you're going to hire them and they're working out of their own studio, yeah. what is your expectation? Well, I mean, you know, we're a little bit different. We don't do a lot of home studio narration. So, right. you know, your samples on Ahab can certainly, they don't have to be, don't go to a state-of-the-art studio and spend a gazillion dollars to create mm-hmm. a, a demo. Right. You know, you can actually lock yourself up in your closet with a mic and really kind of like put up a clip that way. And it would be acceptable. Um, You know, we can usually sort through whether or not these clips are, you know, what you do, what you don't want is like, you don't want to do it out on the 405 in your car. <laughs> right, right. You know, like that's what you don't want. Hey, right right. yeah. Well, no, because my experience was I recorded at Penguin Random House. Penguin yeah. Random. So, so are you, basically auditioning people's studios as well if or if they're able to are they going to come into prh in la or new york or so the intention else? is always for us to have actors come to our facility yeah in okay. our controlled yeah. environment that, that was with really actors. my yeah. silly question yeah to come in and 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 work with our directors and and be in the creative space and i think actors like that you know there's so yeah. many VO oh, actors and people that are working in voice that are in their studio all day alone and you know some of the you know the biggest audiobook names like Scott Brick, who I know you guys have had yep. on before, yeah. and people like that. You know Scott loves coming to the facility because yeah, he does. it's just like oh, I, you can just the collaboration. On there's creative and energy that. there, and all of those different yeah. things. But you know, in terms of like building your profile, I mean, there's other things besides samples we're looking for. I mean, we're looking for you know what are your hobbies? You know, like things like that. So when I'm working on a book that's about you know shuffleboard, I might just put in Ahab on a producer search keyword shuffleboard. And if there's five people that pop up with shuffleboard in their profile, you might say, oh, well, at least this person has some expertise yes, in this place. Yes. Like, like, maybe I should start here. Are yes. they right for the book? Yeah. You know, but also, you know, like what accents can you do? Um, you know, what your background is, your bio, all of those things can all be put in mm-hmm. there um, and give us a pretty good background on who you are before we kind of reach out to you for an audition. Yeah. Or what a like, great idea, man. So yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's it's really, so really exciting. cool. How did you come up with the name, Ahab? <laughs> <laughs> don't story. ever lock yourself into trying to create an acronym it's a bad idea so a colleague of mine uh sue dalton and i sat around we're like what are we going to call this thing because we want to at some point expand it beyond the penguin random house universe and right. allow content producers to use it and i said you know obviously it's literary we're a publishing company um what is the what is the casting search like for producers we don't have a cookie cutter approach to casting you know, we don't look at a book and say, oh, this takes place in England. Uh, just hire the local Londoner. You know, we're like, where does this take place in England? Is this in northern England? Is this in southern England? Is this, you know, I mean, we are really trying to dive in and find the right voice. And sometimes it's maddening because you can listen to 20 or 30 voices and be like, I, can, I cannot get to <laughs> the right mm-hmm. voice. Mm-hmm. And it kind of reminded me of Captain Ahab searching for the one white whale. And he kind of drives him crazy. But at the same time. That's how we are when we cast. Yeah. You know, like it's very easy to bring anyone and be like, okay, read this book. But to get that voice that the author is looking for, mm-hmm. you know, we, it is an endless search for us sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? And it makes it so easy for us to share voices among each other. Um, right. You know, we're a very collaborative group, even though our process is very, you know, autonomous. So we're able to share people's profiles between producers. So if I'm talking to another producer who sits nearby, they're like, oh, do you have any ideas for this book? They name a few criteria. And I said, yes, I'll send you their Ahab profile. And what's great now is agents are really excited about the platform too. So they're getting their clients up there and then they're able to send me their Ahab profiles. And I'm able to click through their client list and see who I want to cast. So it makes everything so much more seamless for everybody because we're getting the content we need they're promoting their clients. Um, 
so yeah, it's been it's made things a lot easier for us. Oh, this is so wow. cool. I can imagine. And it has such potential mm-hmm. oh, what yeah. you guys can do with this. That's what's really exciting, just yeah. how this can well, we want to share it with the world, and you know, I think we're getting there this year. We'll, we're in development to have some new features internally that we'll be working on, yeah. um, including an audition feature where producers internally um, can reach out to any number of actors and send them content and say, "I'd love for you to audition for this." They can upload mm-hmm. the clips to the site right. uh, almost instantly, right. and then we'll be able to kind of evaluate those auditions, everything in the actual ecosystem of AI. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And then eventually, hopefully roll this out so that content creators from all walks of life, not Mm -hmm. just audiobook people, but, you know, people that are working commercial or animation or anything else, will be able to scout talent in the platform. Yeah. So, and, and so people should know this is free for talent to use. There's no membership fees. There's no hidden fees. And um, and it's Ahab, A-H-A-B dot U-S. It's on the screen there. Um, Is there anything that you want the talent to know things like kind of do's and don'ts of creating their profiles. Lots of pictures. We know you like lots of pictures, Dan. <laughs> For VO stuff. So body shots, yeah. wallpaper. Yeah. No. Um, the thing I'll say coming up is that I know we all get a lot of spam in our inboxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you want to work with us, I would sign up for our communications because it's a way that we're going to keep you in the loop about all upcoming marketing yeah. opportunities yeah. about any public appearances we're doing if we're bringing anybody in for like live auditions so i know people get a lot of spam but it's actually going to be a useful tool for them and right. it'll also be a way for them to get notified about auditions that we're going to be requesting once these features are up and running great so that's going to be huge as he said anything in your bio we like knowing who you are you know the audiobook community is a really big, warm community. Mm -hmm. And it is useful, especially when it comes to nonfiction books. You know, if someone's a World War II buff, I want to know that if I'm casting a World War II book. Um, What are a few other things that you'd like people to to know before uploading and maybe things that you don't need at all? Like, obviously, you don't need pictures. We've already made fun of that. Um, (laughs) You don't want uh, commercial demos or animation demos. Not right now. I mean, I think when we expand the site into other forms of voiceover, we're going to want all of those things. I mean, right now it's strictly for audiobooks. Right. Um, but I think the things that we're interested, like there are there are areas of the site where you could provide links to all of your other work. Okay. So a link to you know even if, if it's a sales page, like where an audiobook is selling that you've recorded, that's that's useful for us. We like to hear samples even outside right. of the site. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that the stuff that's most important when we're doing searches as producers is if I'm producing a book that has I need a fifty year old man who can do a French accent and a Lebanese accent or something, you can actually put all of that information in into Ahab. And when I do a search for those specific criteria, you'll come up. So mm-hmm. things like that are really important. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously, like your agent's information. You know, one of the things that when we started this was like, what are, all the other sites that are out there are just kind of trying to go direct to actors and it makes it uncomfortable for the actor. It makes it uncomfortable for the agent. Mm-hmm. We want this to be like a communal thing. Like we work with agents and SAG-AFTRA and you know, we want everybody to be included in this. So we've been talking to everyone about how this can be an inclusive platform where everyone gets behind it. And that's yeah. part of the reason. So And everyone's in the loop. You're not people aren't being cut out of the loop. No, no. not at all. Yeah. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, so as much we want as much information as you want to give us. Yes. We will give you some more boxes in AM <laughs> to put information as much as you want to give us. I mean, yeah. it's it's the equivalent of like walking up to someone at a cocktail party. Except you get two hours of their time. Except right, you can right, put right. all of this information. Yeah. I mean, the clips are important, but knowing more about you as like what your training is, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. where you, where you went to school, where you learned to be an actor, you know, who you trained with. Those things are important to us yeah. um, because I have seen, you know, if Scott Brick, Brick is teaching a class, I'll pick up the phone and call Scott and say, mm-hmm. "Hey, tell me a little bit more about this guy." Mm-hmm. You know, like you think he can handle something like this? You know, like I think it's a it's really useful. The more information you can give us likely the more you'll get recognized in the platform. Yeah. I love That's it. That's fantastic, fantastic, man. What do you guys find are some misconceptions people have about audiobooks from the narrating perspective and from the producing perspective? It's a lot more difficult to narrate than I think people ever imagine mm-hmm. because it's long-form content. You're in a booth for eight hours a day. You take breaks. But that's what everyone says. Even me, I'll record bit parts on audiobooks. And we were joking around earlier before we started recording that I wore corduroy pants one time. Oh, no. And he was directing me. And I started, like, rubbing my hands against my pants, with which comes 
off very loudly in the booth. So there are all these little quirks about it. But um, it's a lot more difficult, I think. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, if you hear a multi-voice recording, those people are usually not in the booth together. Mm -hmm. Those are usually recorded separately. So that's just a little quirky mm -hmm. thing that you might not think of if yeah. you're a listener. Yeah. I mean, um, I would say in the, like some of the other misconceptions, like we don't do this in one take. That's a good yes. thing. Oh my, <laughs> God, oh my yes. God for That's that. a good thing. I mean, you I've actually had people say, one. do I have to start the chapter over? It's like, yeah. no, no, no. Just go back to the comma, please. Oh I don't want to. Yeah. You know, I think it's also, you know, as Julie said, it's not the same thing as doing a commercial demo or a commercial uh, voiceover or something, you know, like, we don't want you to walk in and, and sit down and go, chapter one. And it's like, wait a second, this is about, you know, murder. You know, this is not the right, that's not the <laughs> right time. Oh. Think about, you know, yes. the subtext yes. of what yes. you're reading. Um, so I think the misconceptions are that it is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen actors that have been acting for 30 years and never yeah. recorded an audiobook come in and just say, I can't do this. Wow. Well, that feeling like out. being so still, but keeping yeah. energy, yeah. that keeping consistent proximity to the mic, all those kinds of things, you know, that you don't think about. Um, or if you have that sort of clicking thing you do with your nail, when yeah. you, you know, that yes. people don't, I mean, it catches every yeah. Well, and also, molecule. Um, if you're an audiobook producer, just like in so many other professions, you get so many people coming up to you saying, Oh, people say I have a good voice. Yeah. I should record audiobooks. But what they don't realize is there's so much talent behind that voice. These are very well-trained actors who are doing this work. They're storytellers. They're they know storytellers. How to capture yeah. your They're literally people. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot more to it than just having a nice sounding voice. Well, and it's also like yeah. a preparation thing. I mean, I would mm -hmm. say that like most of the work happens before you even get in there. Yeah. You know, reading the book before you come into the studio, very important. You know, a new with, concept. Reading yeah, the I mean, book before you prepping read the, book. the script. I mean, you see some of the. We've seen. We've been lucky enough to see some of the, the like most famous audiobook narrators and how they work over the years. And I remember, you know, watching someone like Jim Dale, who like color codes his script when he's mm -hmm. recording Harry Potter. Yeah, I mean, that's a technique. Some people color coded according to character. Some people color coded according to mood. Um, you know, things like that. Some people carry around, you know, a tape recorder, and they go. You know, I have a voice for this guy I just came up with. Like, you should mm -hmm. always be preparing a book, even yeah. when you're not recording one. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are things you can use in your toolbox yeah. to become a better reader? Yeah. Um, and is, is it the director's responsibility to keep track if they're, if the, the, the narrator is doing multiple voices? Let's oh, say sure. 10 yes. different voices, yeah. and that same voice is appearing here and there. That it is the same exact voice appearing here and there. Absolutely, yeah. it's, that I, must be crazy. Yeah, I mean it's it's yeah. overwhelming, and and I think not just that, but are they like t is they is is that voice now running into the attribution at the end? It's yeah. like I'm coming to get you. He said, "No, it's <laughs> yes. I'm coming to get you." He said, "You know, like there's a difference there." And, yeah. and the director on the other side is is kind of just checking the actor at all times. I mean, yeah. for the most part, actors don't hear. What's actually what they're saying? Sometimes they say, and they're like, "I said that," and you're like, mm -hmm. "You said that's that. what I sound like." You said that, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the director, you know, we think it's that kind of triangle of like, you know, the right book with the right director and the right um, actor is like the most mm -hmm. effective way to get the yeah. best recording. Yeah. Dan, I'm going to quote you to yourself. Oh, uh -oh. No. oh man. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Should you quote me? <gasps> <laughs> Dan Zitt said the following. Um, you said when we produced- I hope this wasn't in college. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to the video. Uh, whoops. No, you said when we produce an audiobook, it's not just what's on the page. We're producing an experience. Do you want to expand on that? I mean, I think there are some good examples of books that uh, kind of transcend the medium. Um, you know, I was lucky enough this summer to work on two books that just- you know, are great on the page, but when you listen to them, you know, it's a completely different experience. It brings listeners to audiobooks and something like the Beastie Boys book, which has 40 narrators, actors, musicians, yeah. celebrities, sound design, all these different things. It kind of transcends the medium. It's, it's unlike anything I think that's ever been produced. Yeah. Um, and people, after we released that audiobook that I hadn't heard from in like 10 years, were emailing me going, Dude, I picked up that Beastie Boys thing. I'm now hooked on audiobooks. Yeah. You know, so, or, you know, Mrs. Obama's book, mm -hmm. which is now the biggest book of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting there listening to Michelle Obama actually tell you her story 
is a lot different than you hearing her voice in your head when you're reading. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a lot more intimate. And I think, you know, we are in the business of creating experiences for people mm-hmm. and, and making it intimate and making it emotional and making you feel it. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it is definitely, I've heard this from many, many a person where they they tell me I was driving, I had to pull over because I was weeping, yes. listening to a certain yes. book or laughing so hard. You know, so it depends on what the content is, but, you know, we are very open to, you know, it's not just grab them, sit them in front of a mic. It's about, mm-hmm. like, how are we going to create an experience for the, for the listener? Yeah. Well, you guys are the platinum standard for Absolutely, sure. without a We're doubt. We're biased, but I'll say it. It's <laughs> our show. That concludes part one with uh, Dan Zitt and Juliana Wilson. And man, was that good. So you guys good. are good. So good. You guys are good. We're going to yeah. be back next week with part two, so check it out. Make sure to follow all of us on social. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always have time for a little buzz. I forgot the line. Leo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosvetrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.